the whole thing's fake. It's all theater. None of it happened. No, I mean, the evidence is this really happened. And now they're going to try to take our liberties and take our free speech. But separately, the EU that champions restricting free speech on so many fronts, and Lord Monta can speak to that, is now having this big rally. Uh, and then Obama's being criticized for not being there. I, I do think that was a bad move. And Obama is connected heavily to arming the ISIS rebels that we know helped arm and train these people. The, the girlfriend has now run through Turkey to Syria. But Lord Monckton's spoken out a lot about radical Islamification of Europe. And again, he founded the party that's promoting national sovereignty and basically getting out of the EU, that's gaining a lot of seats in the EU parliament and in the UK. So he can speak to that. Uh, I, I originally last week asked them to try to get him on this week about the record cold temperatures, but still the carbon tax agenda rolls forward. But Lord Moncton of scienceandpublicpolicy.org, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us. He's a former businessman, newspaper editor, inventor, classical architect, trained orator, and a high priest of climate skepticism. He was special advisor to Margaret Thatcher, prime minister from 82 to 86. On leaving 10 Downing, he established a successful specialist consultancy company giving technical advice to corporations and governments. His knowledge of science and politics behind global warming is noted with its breadth and depth. And he's traveled the world, and, and I, I, you can give him credit for waking up Australia to repeal carbon taxes. He is a big deal. And, of course, the media won't make him a big deal because they want to hide what he's done, but he is a big deal. He's a real celebrity of promoting renaissance and freedom worldwide, uh, and we can learn from him successful ways to counter this evil. Uh, so he joins us to cover the waterfront. Uh, Lord Moncton, we should obviously start first with the tragic killings of 20 people uh, by these radical jihadis in Paris, and then the... Uh, calls for defending free speech by culprits of attacking free speech. Well, this is the extraordinary thing. The jihadists did what they did because they didn't like some cartoons about Islam that had appeared in Charlie Hebdo. And so free speech is all very well if you happen to be pro-Islamic, but if you want to say anything that questions Islam, you have to be very careful indeed or the terrorists will come after you. And of course, the EU has been trying to shut down free speech for some time. If you are an EU functionary, even if you're just a cleaner, it says in your contract that you may not say anything that in any way questions the political desirability or efficiency of the EU. Because if you do, they can sack you and penalize you and cost you your pension. They buy the silence of those who work for them. And this includes, of course, the members of the European Parliament uh, itself. They, too, are beginning to be limited in what they can say about the EU, which makes it rather difficult for my party, UKIP, which now has 24 members of the European Parliament. We are the largest party uh, from Britain in the European Parliament as of uh, last year's elections. And we, as you can imagine, are doing our best, first of all, to defend free speech, then to make sure that in Britain we are free not to let so many Muslim immigrants in if we choose not to. Because at the moment, the EU is adopting what is more or less an open borders policy. People can come in from all over the place. There are virtually no controls unless you try to get into the UK. We still maintain some control. Well, that's the own. socialist game plan with Obama opening the borders to bring in groups that will vote socialist. Here's the thing. In France, 93% of the uh, 8 or 9 million Muslims who are now in France, how they got there, goodness knows, but there are 8 or 9 million of them, 93% of those voted socialist. And of course, Monsieur Hollande, who's the president of France, came out and said, of course, these terrorist acts have got nothing at all to do with Islam. Well, it's time he came off the Kool-Aid. Of course, they are to do with Islam. 95% of all terrorist acts around the world over the last 20 years, including specifically the ones in Paris, were committed in the name of Allah by people shrieking Allahu Akbar. And what is happening? Are the moderate Muslim clerics speaking out and condemning the extremists? This is what worries me. There is a frightening silence 
from what is supposed to be moderate Islam in the face of these terrorist attacks. And what do you get from Hollande? You get a craven statement that this has nothing to do with Islam when it blindingly obviously has. But of course, he doesn't want to offend those 93% of the eight or nine uh, million Muslims in France who voted for him last time. Why does Islam always vote left in those countries where it gets in? The answer, of course, is that Islam is a totalitarian religion, and the left, because Islam votes left, will always open its borders to let more Muslims in. Tony Blair did it. Uh, um, Cameron in in, uh, Britain, who is indistinguishable from a socialist, he's doing it. They're pouring in on every plane and every boat. Uh, Very little steps are being taken to stop it. We do still retain the freedom to stop it, provided they come from anywhere other than Europe. But our trouble, trouble is that if they come in from the European Union, then our right to stop them and turn them away is very severely restricted. And then people like Michael we Savage... We are no masters of our own country. Exactly. And then people like Michael Savage, we're going to skip this network break, uh, who, who was going to go speak about the threat of radical Islam in England, is banned from entering the UK, and they're adding hundreds of people to it. And I was warned when I came in, they had different groups of police meet me and just show up at the hotel that, hey, you better not criticize Islam while you're here. I'm not somebody that's ever even been attacking because uh, there are a lot of Muslims that I think are nice people and aren't radical. But you're right. What dominates it is the totalitarian angle. And they've intimidated the non-radical Muslims. And the West seems to be backing radical Muslims through Saudi Arabia, taking over the Middle East and Africa. And so it looks like they are really a protected group. Well, even if I agreed with Islam... Uh, I would be mad as a libertarian with the fact that they get special treatment. You're not allowed to criticize them. That's frightening that they let jihadi preachers get up and preach for terror attacks on UK television, but that Michael Savage can't come into the country. That's chilling. Well, this is something which I think is very dangerous indeed. I'm very sorry that Michael Savage has been banned. Yes, he speaks strongly, as do you, as sometimes do I. But does this mean we ought to be silenced? No. What is happening is that free speech is rapidly vanishing in favor of what is politically correct. And of course, what is politically correct means what is politically left wing. If it's left wing, it's correct under this new disposition. And if you're not left wing, then you are going to be silenced. And they've tried this on the climate. They've tried this on Islam. They're doing it on various subjects. And the danger that I see is that the media, most of which are also now left wing anyway, are willing to go along with this gradual circumscription of free speech. And of course, you also see it very dangerously indeed in the universities, the places that used to be places of light, of liberty and of learning in Disraeli's great phrase. Now you can scrub liberty and light and learning. Now it's doctrine, doctrine and doctrine. Left-wing doctrine, Islamist doctrine, anti-Christian doctrine, anti-Western doctrine throughout the universities. This is a very extraordinary moment for the West because the West is busy abdicating all the reasons for its greatness. Our freedom of speech, our liberty of expression, our freedom of movement, our freedom of action, our freedom to form and unmake companies, our freedom to keep most of our own earnings, our freedom to say what we want to say, albeit to be polite and not to be libelous, but at least to speak freely. All these freedoms are now almost extinct. That's right. And the West is committing suicide on the altar of socialist, communist, collectivist failure. This is the tragedy, because socialism has failed. The welfare state has gone bankrupt everywhere. In the United States, the national debt has doubled in the lifetime of this president in office. We'll call him a president, though he isn't really. Likewise, in the United Kingdom, in the lifetime of just one parliament, only five years, The national debt of Britain, which took 250 years to accumulate, has doubled in just five years. Why? Because the welfare state is out of control. And part of that, of course, is uncontrolled immigration. And people arriving at the airport going straight to their compatriots who work in the benefit offices, claiming large benefits and free operations on the National Health Service from the British taxpayer, though they have no right to them. The British taxpayer, therefore, has to queue and wait and start. Isn't Cloward and Piven the end game? Bankrupt the West? and then bring in total collectivism. I mean, this is a nightmare scenario. And as you said, we've had a 
doubling or an exponential growth in just the last five years in the West of debt. Other European countries are going bankrupt as we speak. What is the end game and, and how long until it all collapses? Well, this is a very good question. I have a, a cousin who is very high up in the financial world, and he reckons about six months and it's going to fall apart. He said the, the debt has gone way beyond what is sustainable. And in Britain, it could even happen sooner because if, as I suspect we will, we end up with a socialist government after our general elections in May this year, just a few months away now, then the stock market here and then worldwide will collapse more or less immediately. So I'm busy repositioning myself to get out of the stock market into other things. Gold, silver look good. They haven't gone up much in the last five years, but I think they suddenly will when everything begins to collapse. It's very good news, of course, that the oil price has fallen. That's actually been a benefit to the Western economies, though paradoxically, the stock markets have gone down in response to that because they sense, and I think rightly, that there is an instability uh, uh, because the one cartel which is permitted in international law when all others are banned by the World Trade Organization is, of course, the oil cartel. And people are beginning to be reminded that Saudi Arabia still controls that cartel, and it is trying at the moment to shut down all the shale gas and shale oil operations in Canada, in the United States, in Britain, in Poland. Why? Because they don't want to find that we can start drilling for our own right. oil rather than them selling it to us. So they're trying to knock us out of the market by using their cartel power. And I think it's time that the West stood up to Saudi Arabia, not only, of course, on the oil cartel, but also on the matter of its funding of a particularly extreme version of Islam, the Wahhabist version of Islam, which they're spreading right across the Muslim crescent to the south of Russia, right into Pakistan, and as you said earlier, right down into Africa. Now, I think we have to be careful with our language when we talk about Islam. I don't think we should simply quote the admittedly very extreme passages in the Quran, which abrogate the more gentle passages, the, the passages that, that say, uh, you know, you should kill non-Muslims wherever you find them and wherever you can. Uh, these passages are there. They do take precedence over the moderate passages. But most Muslims, and we must give them credit for this, realize that their holy book in that respect is nonsense. And they do not behave in that way. And they do not support those who do. So I think uh, that like you, I am a friend of moderate Islam because in many respects it shares our values. For instance, you and I don't like baby butchering and nor does official Islam like baby butchering. Uh, so they, we do have some moral standards in common on which I think we should build. But simply to give in to Islam in the way that left-wing governments like that of Monsieur Hollande are doing worldwide, that's when you get terrorism. If you look weak and you have a socialist administration, then in come the terrorists because they know that you'll sure. get exactly the kind of rhetoric that Hollande came out with trying to say that this was nothing to do with Islam. This is a real danger if we cannot get our politicians to speak the truth because they themselves have become frightened by the terrorists, then we need more muscular politicians. Well, it shows the complete surrender of the socialists who have a 100 plus percent tax rate on the middle class uh, in France. I'm not joking, folks. That's Associated Press. 101 percent tax rate to fully bankrupt their enemies. And the socialists have been found with Swiss bank accounts, so they're exempt from it, uh, as they always operate as EU dictators. And we use that term. Lord Monten can back up the statistics. They are dictatorial. Benjamin Netanyahu, it's now being reported, regardless of what you think of him, was told by the French president, don't march with us, but Netanyahu still did it. Regardless, I mean, that, that shows how much uh, the radical Islamist system has happened that they're going to tell a foreign president, you can't march with us. I mean, this is really getting bizarre. Well, it is. And I think it shows the weakness and intellectual bankruptcy of the left worldwide. This is an extraordinary feature of what's going on in the world now. The left are wrong, objectively speaking, about everything. They're wrong to pander to extremist Islam. They're wrong about the climate. They're wrong about the environment. They're wrong about the economy. They're wrong about the welfare state. Wrong on any rational measure. And yet 
they prevail in all the bureaucratic institutions. Most bureaucracies in government, most bureaucracies like the UN, the supranational bureaucracies, these left-wing bureaucracies are under the thumb of the extreme left. And they're wrong about everything, relentlessly, determinedly wrong. And the wronger they are, the shriller they get in trying to insist that they're right. And I think it's only a matter of time before the world begins to wake up and come off the Kool-Aid and realize that we can't any longer indulge the fantasies of the left. They are bidding fair, and some of them deliberately bidding fair, to destroy the West in various ways. Sure. The climate part of that, the undermining of the economy. That they can't compete with free market file. prosperity. Lord Moncton, Lord Christopher Moncton is our guest. Amazing. His website is amazing as well. We're going to come back and ask him if the collapse is coming in the next six months, the next year. We can see a lot of signs of that. Uh, then what comes out of it? How do we defeat the culture battle that they're planning to use the crisis to sell more socialism as the answer? How do we defeat that? Then we'll shift gears into what's happening with the climate, carbon taxes, record cold weather, and more. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Lord Moncton never over-announced his case. He really just laid it all out, and he's been proven right. The UN responded five years ago when he helped get the secret documents of their real treaty to basically double third world taxes. They claimed it was a wealth transfer to the third world, the carbon tax. And Lord Moncton was able to get uh, the secret treaty and, of course, didn't get any credit for that. He was locked out of the one in Durban, South Africa, two years ago, so he parachuted into that. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And they have to keep these treaties secret, just like the Trans-Pacific Partnerships and uh, the other ones, because when we get them, it is pure global government totalitarian garbage uh, that is being forced down our throats. We're going to be talking to him uh, in a moment about what's coming next. We've seen record cold temperatures, snow in Hawaii, snow in Florida. And their answer is, oh, see, that's the climate change. No longer global warming. Well, of course, the climate's always changing. And they had a vote five years ago at the Copenhagen event, or six years ago now. They had a vote, and they voted, and said the sun does not affect climate. Because they knew all these scientists were coming out saying it's the sun, it's the sun, not carbon dioxide that plants live off of. Before we go any further, it is almost sold out. We only printed 5,000 of them. It's nine ninety five. Shipping is included. It's the 2015 calendar that we just got in last week. And the reason it's selling out so quickly is obviously it's got a monthly promo code. We're talking, you know, one month is 10% off store-wide, another month is 15% off store-wide, other areas, 15% uh, you know, off the purchase of InfoWars Seed Center has the promo code, 25% off any Made in America t-shirt at InfoWarsStore.com, 10% off your purchase or $75 off or greater, uh, just period. Uh, another month is 15% off all Made in America 1776 products. 10% off store-wide. This is on top of other specials. Free shipping. That's another. So it's a coupon book. And it's got Leanne McAdoo holding two fifty caliber rifles, okay, while sports cars and American Eagles fly around in the background. Yes, it's supposed to be obnoxiously America. Great way to wake up friends and family. Give them a calendar. They hang it up. They'll look at 12 great images on there, patriotic and exciting images. Molon Labe. Uh, we've got Dianne Feinstein's head on Betty Page's body. I mean, we've got everything in here. It is family, though. I mean, a bathing suit's not a big deal. There, there's one pinup girl in here putting down the outgoing senator. So... It's got me giving the first speech since the Alamo was destroyed at the Alamo since the state opened it up to speeches uh, when the Ag Commissioner had me down there to speak. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139, and they will sell out in the next day or two. It was just a test to see if folks like the calendar, and the answer is yes, folks love the calendar. But it's basically a real coupon book. I mean, you, you could save thousands of dollars with this uh, if you took advantage of all the coupons uh, that are in it. It's, it's, it's not a gimmick. These are real discounts. Finally, speaking of real discounts, we have the Oxy Power that flushes out the upper and lower intestine, the super male or super female vitality, your choice, and the methocobalamin vitamin B12 that's more absorbable. 
Truly Organic, Secret 12. All three products, 48% off retail price at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com. 48% off. We've got some other specials as well on the Nation Iodine X2 and more. All right, going, and again, it is your purchases that make the broadcast possible, so I want to thank you all uh, for your ongoing support. We're not like NPR that gets $400 million of taxpayer money a year, MSNBC that gets billions in uh, you know, tax write-offs that they're specially given or stimulus money. We're funded by you spreading the word, supporting the sponsors, and buying the products at InfoWarsLife.com. And a lot of times when guests like Lord Moncton or others aren't getting mainstream media coverage. I know this show has been critical in getting it out there, forcing it out there, thanks to you, our activist audience. So I salute all of you out there worldwide, not just here in the United States. Now, Lord Moxon, I'm going to try to give you the floor now to go over this. We'll be showing some of the headlines while you speak. But uh, penguins for the first time taking cover in Antarctica. Ice sheets growing at record levels. Uh, sea levels in many areas dropping. Uh, some areas rising slightly. We know they go up and down. Um, just absolute evidence that the earth has been slowing its heating and now is cooling due to the sun as you and other scientists together laid it out. Doesn't matter. Multiple states are implementing carbon taxes by fiat. Obama's going forward with executive action to shut down more power plants. Uh, I mean, this is a plan to bankrupt us. England is a test example. What is happening in the fight right now on that front that, that you've been leading? The first thing is that I've now had a paper published today in the Chinese Science Bulletin. Now, this is a big deal. It's one of the top six science journals in the world. It is the Bulletin of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is the largest academy of sciences in the world. And this paper explains what went wrong in the climate models to make everybody think that there might be a lot rather than virtually no global warming as a result of our adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. You see, here's a fact which can be, which bears repetition. And you did this with a if bunch of top scientists. About, I mean, how much, yeah. Sorry? also add who you co-authored it with. That's right, yes, it's with Dr. Willie Soon of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, a solar physicist, with uh, Professor David Legate, he's a professor of uh, geography at the University of Delaware, and also with Matt Briggs, who's known as the statistician to the stars in New York. So three very distinguished co-authors, I was the lead author, and what we did was to present a new, irreducibly simple climate model which any student of physics can work on his pocket calculator if he wants. And it allows you to get more accurate forecasts of what's going to happen to global temperature as a result of our adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere than the big climate models that have got it wrong time and time and time again. And we've been able to go into the big models. We've found the mistakes they've made. We've exposed in this leading paper in the first issue of, an, of this newly relaunched journal. It's now being launched onto the world stage. It's no longer just a Chinese journal. And this paper explains where they got it wrong, how they got it wrong, why they got it wrong, and what it means that they got it wrong. What it means is we're going to see not more than one Celsius degree of global warming this century, and it might be a lot less than that. And even if we were to burn off all the affordably recoverable fossil fuels in the world, global temperatures compared with now would rise by about 2.2 Celsius degrees, and that's about it. So there is no climate problem. There never was, and we have now proved it. And this paper is already spreading like wildfire among the institutions. We're now making arrangements, thanks to the Heartland Institute, for it to go open access, which is quite an expensive option. Uh, but that means that within the week, everyone, even if they don't subscribe to the Chinese Science Bulletin, Incredible. will be able to get a copy of this picture of this paper from Springer.com, the, the publishers. And this paper is going to turn climate science on its head because it shows that they've made some really elementary, really stupid errors, which led to the mistaken belief that adding a little CO2 to the atmosphere would make a huge difference. The fact is that to the nearest tenth of 1%, there isn't any CO2 in the atmosphere. That's how little of it there is. 
And yes, even that small amount can make some difference. But is it going to make enough of a difference to melt the ice sheets? No, as you've just mentioned, the ice sheets have in fact grown to record extents. Just three months ago, the ice sheets of the North and South Poles added together were a greater extent than ever measured before in the satellite era. The only place you'll hear that information is on Infowars.com. You won't hear that in any mainstream news medium. They will not tell you this fact. They will not tell you that sea level basically isn't rising at all. It might rise, according to the world's greatest expert on the subject, by a matter of perhaps inches, maybe two, maybe four, maybe six inches over the whole of the 21st century. Is this a problem? No, it's not enough even to cover the spats on my highly polished shoes. The whole thing is nonsense. The deserts are shrinking as rainfall is bringing, is greening areas that the nomads haven't been able to live in since living memory. Now they're moving back. 30,000 square kilometers of the Sahara has disappeared under vegetation. It's good news right across the globe. Hurricanes are down. Floods, virtually no change. The area of the world under drought has declined over the last 30 years. None of these things is being mentioned in any mainstream news media. Lord Moncton. What we've done is to go right into the models, expose where they got it wrong, and now it's going to be very much harder for them from now on to pretend that they have to do anything at all about introducing world government in Paris in December this year, which is what they are still, unfortunately, planning to do. And that was my next question. You read my mind. I wanted to get into what the Pope said and the rest of it. But just going back, you're, you're being very gentlemanly and very kind. We have the emails. We have ClimateGate that you helped expose. We know that it's premeditated fraud to pass carbon taxes because if you can tax carbon dioxide that, that, that humans exhale, as the New York Times said, a tax on breathing, you can micromanage and surveil every level of the economy, selectively shutting off whoever you want, shut off UK, shut off US, shut off EU production. The bureaucrats then, their wives and husbands, literally own the factories and coal plants in China and India and then they move there. I mean, this is paying to dismantle Europe, paying to dismantle the U.S., a premeditated, wicked plan. I mean, is there any doubt? Now, you certainly have those because of political pressure. I go to the movies now, and I went to two different theaters the last month, different chains. They had documentaries about islands in the Pacific that are going to be underwater now, which we all know is a fraud. Uh, and please, you know, you know, don't kill us with these natives begging. The, the propaganda push has been quadrupled from what I've seen. And then the Pope, and I'm not a Catholic basher. I, I believe you're a Catholic. My yes, point is... Let me talk about the Pope, yeah, because yeah. this is very interesting. Um, he has begun to come out with some rather silly noises about climate change. Uh, he is, of course, on the far left himself, and he has an even more radical prefect of the uh, Pontifical Academy of Sciences, uh, Monsignor Sanchez uh, Sorondo. Now, I had lunch at the Pontifical Academy with Sanchez Sorondo under the beautiful painted ceiling. They live very well at the, at the Vatican. Um, and this was about three years ago. And he had on one side of him me, and on the other side of him, Italy's most distinguished scientist, Professor Antonino Zichichi, who's the founder and still head at the age of 86 of the World Federation of Scientists. And both of us told Sanchez Sarando that there is no basis for concern about our effect on the climate. It's minimal. And in those countries of the West where we have got the environment, we've cleaned up the act, we've cleaned up pollution, uh, there's really no threat to uh, wildlife or to us or to plants or to anything from the activities of man. Uh, in the poorer countries, there still is in China, real pollution, the uh, the, uh, they don't burn coal very cleanly, for instance. They could do, but they don't yet. And there you do get genuine pollution. But CO2 is not a pollutant. But the Pope is planning to issue in March of this year, just a couple of months away, an encyclical letter. This is a letter to all 400,000 clergy and all the 1.2 billion Catholic faithful saying to them that they must now put the climate before their religion and they must start saying that unless the West is shut down, the world is doomed. Now, that's the line we are hearing from the Vatican at the moment. I am hoping that the 
more old-fashioned members of the Curia advising the Pope will say to him, look, mate, we've got this wrong before with Galileo, trying to get him to pretend that the Earth doesn't go around the sun. We were wrong on that. We are not infallible on matters of science, only on matters of faith or doctrine. Be very careful. And so if Pope Francis watches and listens to your program regularly, as I'm sure he does, <laughs> then here's a warning to him. Keep proper restraint. It's not the business of the church to speak out on scientific questions, nor is it the business of the church to take sides in what is frankly a highly partisan political dispute between the left and the rest of the world. The left are promoting the climate agenda. The harder the left, the harder they push it. And they're the anti-religion right. and anti-Catholic. Let me let me expand on this fair. point because because this is the key. You've done mm -hmm. equations, and I and I've seen similar ones. And, and of course, this came up when when we got the UN treaty planned five years ago at Copenhagen, mm -hmm. that it would almost double, right at double, the taxes on the third world. So it's not a big wealth transfer like it's been billed by the socialists. It's a giant swindle and allows them to control all energy, but. If the Catholic Church or Christians, period, are pro-life, this is a death sentence when Obama says you can't have industrialization in Africa, you can't have a car or an air conditioner. That is a, a very, very fair point. And it's a point that I hope a mature encyclical will look at. I think that I would like to see the Holy See being a bit brave here, as the previous pope was. And what he said about all this is that Yes, the scientists are expressing concern. However, there are also scientists expressing concern that the scientists expressing concern have over the pudding. And therefore, there are two sides to this. And the previous pope said, and quite rightly said, that it is not for those who are backed by governments who want this nonsense to try to silence those of us who are doing perfectly good science questioning this. We must be allowed access to the journals and to be fair to the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which reviewed this, I may say, at a very high level before letting it be published. They, uh, in the end, accepted that we had made a sound scientific argument sure. that there isn't a problem with the climate, and therefore they were willing to print it. Now, virtually no Western journal of the same standing would have even sent our paper out for review. That's how far Western science... That's how control, but shifting gear back to the Catholic issue. Yeah. You, you, you said it, what, in the first 10 years of the carbon taxes, as it was in the treaty, a billion dead, correct? So isn't this a pro-life issue that morally... I mean, the, uh, I, mean I, don't, I can't put that kind of figure on it. What I can say is that the number of people killed will be very large. You just Even if you take a prosperous country like Britain, uh, three years ago, we had an unusually cold winter in which 20,000 people died. Wow. And that's something like 12,000 more than would normally die in a cold winter above the kind of average death rate. So these were about 12,000 excess, excess deaths just in one cold sure, winter. Sure, I'm going from memory. I believe you said, though, because, not a billion. Not because the winter was cold, no. but because their homes were cold, because people can no longer afford to heat them. Even I, sitting in my palace in Edinburgh, have had to turn the heating more or less <laughs> Stay off. there. Stay there, Lord Moncton. Hey, CENTCOM and others came out and said they didn't want to openly arm al-Qaeda in Syria two years ago and help back that off. So um, it's just sick, though, that rebels, our government backed, our troops are now going to have to fight. This is truly sick. But I'm going to shift gears into that in the third hour, open the phones up, take your calls. We have a police officer who helped an old lady popping on. I like to sometimes promote you know, good things that the police are doing, not just show the bad ones. Finishing up with Lord Moncton in this segment and the next, uh, Christopher Moncton joins us. Uh, we were talking during the break. Can you repeat what you were saying? Because I was trying to go back in memory to your billion term. And you were saying, oh, no, the agenda to reduce the population. Get into the UN and the globalists and Ted Turner's own master plan. What's behind wanting to shut off the energy supply of the world? What they want to do is reduce the population not by one billion, but two. 1 billion. It's now 7.2 billion. They want to cut the population by 6.2 
billion. They don't care how many people die of starvation or cold or disease, as long as the population is reduced so that they will be even richer because the poor people won't be consuming all those resources worldwide. That's what this is about. It's a conspiracy. It's what the French would call a trahison d'éclair, but this time on a global scale, a betrayal by the bureaucratic class of the rest of us. On a global scale, they're ganging up together, the totalitarians, Islam and socialism and environmentalism worldwide, getting into bed together to destroy as many of the world's population as they can. Now, in fact, they needn't try too hard because as countries become more prosperous, if they're allowed to by the environmental freaks trying to interfere with prosperity, then population stabilizes all by itself. At the moment, we are already at what is called peak children. There will be no more children alive on Earth ever, probably, than there are today. And the only reason why the world's population will continue to increase over the next 35 years to about 2050 is that people are going to be living longer. Because whatever, despite what the left is trying to do, to do down the third world by not letting them have uh, economic development and in particular coal-fired power stations, they're going to get them, they're going to get electricity, and with it all the benefits of medical care and decent heating and air conditioning. And once that comes in, then the populations in Africa and South America will stop rising and the world population will stabilise. And then even after 2050 or 2060, we could see it beginning to plummet without any interference from the left. And you're quite right, Alex. I mean, people like Holdren, who was one of the advisors to Paul Ehrlich, who wrote that remarkably stupid book, The Population Bomb, and has recently written an even more remarkably stupid book, Holdren, who, of course, is now advising Obama. He has been wrong, as I've just been saying, the left are wrong on everything. He's been wrong on every alarmist, stupid... He's not wrong, he's a liar. Well, I think, he, whichever, whether he's a liar or not, he's certainly wrong. He's incorrect. He made forecasts that have not come to pass. He's full of prunes. That much, I, I think that much we can certainly say. Uh, but yet people on the left still listen to him. Why? Because it provides a fig leaf. It provides a pretext. It provides an excuse. It provides a pretense which enables them to get sure, away with them run the with show. justifying the totalitarian yeah. agenda of suppressing the West and advancing worldwide. And let's use the word communism because that's really what sure. it is. I annoy all the people who comment when I put my monthly temperature records up. There's now been no global warming for 18 years, three months. And I put it up on the um, climatedepot.com and also at whatsappwiththat.com. And the leftist commenters come piling in. And so I now call them climate communists because that's what they are. They're a bunch of totalitarians. Stay there back in 70 seconds. Final Thank comments with Lord Moncton. Infowars.com. Visit GCNlive.com today. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Final segment with Lord Christopher Moncton, the tip of the spear exposing the climate takeover. 
It's a perfect plan. If you can tax and track carbon, you can dominate and run every form of life. And you drill into Bill Gates' statements and the rest of it. It's all about controlling people. They know it's a scam. They chose it. First, it was global cooling in the 70s. And then it was global warming in the 90s. And now it's just change, period. Is it supposed to be happening? Well, a lot of real environmental issues, overfishing and other things, are ignored. We should be trying to industrialize with clean systems of the third world. Then they'll have negative population growth like the West that has about 1.5 children on average. That's actually a collapse rate. From Japan to the United States, wealthy countries are committing suicide. From Italy to Canada, we're having on average 1.5 children. It's even lower in Japan. And as Lord Moncton said, um, the numbers are there. Mathematics does not lie. Lord Moncton, we got four minutes left. You've got the floor to hit any other important tidbits and what you've set your sights on next. There's a success story of Australia. You just got back from there. I'm very pleased about that. I was able to show the graph showing there'd been no global warming for 18 years and then two months, now 18 years, three months, according to the RSS satellite record. And all the other temperature records are within the same kind of statistical territory as that one. So we can't really be sure that we've seen any work warming at all, really, over the last 20 years or so. It simply isn't happening. And that is now gradually becoming better now. It's becoming very, very difficult for the left that control the world's media to keep that secret for very much longer. They're trying to, but they're not getting away with it. It's spreading in Samizdat. People are making postcards of my monthly graphs. They're sending them to each other. The message is getting out there that this isn't happening. Uh, the sea ice extent has been at its greatest recently. Sea level isn't really rising. Hurricanes are down. Flooding is not really changing its pattern much. Droughts are down over the last 30 years. All the disasters they said would happen are showing absolutely no sign of happening at all. Yes, you get occasional extreme weather. You always have, you always will get used to it and prepare for it. But don't, for heaven's sake, think that it's going to get systematically worse because on the evidence so far, it simply isn't. And we now have just a few months to make the world aware that there is no need for any binding climate treaty in uh, Paris in December of this year, they're going to try to do again what they did it failed to do in Copenhagen. They've squared the um, Chinese by effectively exempting them from the process. But other nations at the moment are all going to go along with it, except Canada and New Zealand. Canada might be having a change of government in a few months' time, um, sorry, leaving only Australia standing out against the climate nonsense. And this means that a lot rests on Tony Abbott's shoulders. I'm glad to say that at the moment he's still standing as firm as he can on this. He, has, he is dismantling the carbon tax. And briefly, and the, briefly yeah. we should add Australia is the only one standing against it because they implemented it first and found out how hellish it was. That's right. It, it, it did nothing, of course, for their emissions of CO2. It did nothing to change the climate either way. Indeed, nothing that mankind does about CO2 will measurably alter the climate at all, according to our research. It's just not going to make that much difference. This whole exercise, every red cent spent on making global warming go away, on having these fancy conferences in places where they have grass skirts, uh, these, every penny of this has been wasted and will continue to be wasted until the world comes to its senses. Alex, we have less than one year. I'm trying to raise $1.3 million to make a film, a full-length feature film, to go into the cinemas, um, to take Al Gore's movie on head-on, to take on the documentaries that you saw being shown in the cinemas about the islands disappearing beneath the waves. It's largely nonsense. We want 1.3 million. We're just uh, now beginning the fundraising for that. And if we get it in the next month or two, then we're going to go ahead over the next few months, make the film and get it into the cinemas in September so that people worldwide will get the fact. Incredible. How do folks get involved? Scienceandpublicpolicy.org? That's right. Get in touch with us there. Get in touch through Alex Jones if you want to help, because we just need that relatively small amount of money. If we get that, we can make the film. We have Amazing. a film crew. We have a director. Lord Monk, and you're fighting back. Thank you so much. We're fighting back. We certainly are. God bless America. Every